I'm Norma Cooper, and I've been serving at a number of different places the last 18 years at Holy Trinity in Irving, Texas. And I was ordained in 1987. I'm about two weeks short of 32 years of ordination. Why don't we start out then um, by having you share how you experienced your call to ministry? Okay, experience my call to ministry. I'm going to shorten that up as much as possible because it took the hound of heaven a couple of, well, more than a couple of years to get me there. Um, I guess it began in my late 20s when I was in that hippie frame of mind of not trusting anybody over 30, which now at the age of 73 is humorous. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, I was a Christmas and Easter Christian, and one Christmas I sat down in a pew, and this thought came into my head, you will be a pastor. And my response was, oh, I'm real religious tonight. And then uh, a couple of years later, the thought came again, and I thought, maybe this is something serious God is talking about, if this is God talking. And I simply thought in reply, Lord, if you want me to be a pastor, you have got to do some changing in me. Because at that point in my life, I was one very angry person. And I just, I just said in thought to the Lord, uh, you need to change me or <clears throat> I will tear a church apart. And... The Lord answered that prayer through therapy and experience and over a period of time, um, anger began to be understood and began to cease. And then there was an evening that I was sitting in the, you have arrived now, two-story all brick house on the cul-de-sac. And I was reading Agatha Christie and suddenly became aware of the presence of the Lord in a way that just stopped me in my tracks and tears began flowing and I thought to the Lord, why do you come to me? And the feeling, the sense of reply back was, you now know how to love go out there and love them. And that's when I took it seriously. <laughs> yeah, you. yeah. For someone who is considering ministry today, what advice would you give them? When you have a sense that this is indeed what you are called to, be open to that call and know that ministry, and you're not just talking about ordained ministry, right? Mm -hmm. Ordained ministry? Any, any, any okay, good, because I, I wanted to say any form of ministry when it is our calling and our vocation is a privilege and the greatest joy uh, in the world to be able to do. How do female images of God shape your theology or your ministry, if they do? Hmm. I love the concept of the mother hen with her chicks, where Jesus says, I, I would have just drawn you under my wing, because there is that sense of, of not only motherliness, but of power that this mother hen will gather. Um, so I like that one, yeah. And what is it that saint, uh, sustains you spiritually in your ongoing ministry? I think it's the joy of serving, the privilege of 
getting to do what what feels like such joy. And then there have been moments, just not many that I've known of, but moments where the Lord worked through the space that I was in to really bring a change in someone's life. And when I've been privileged to discover those moments, my feeling has been, uh, if I died in 30 seconds, my life would be worth living. Yeah. <laughs> you describe such a powerful experience of God's presence in your call story. And I'm wondering um, how, uh, were there other moments like that or have there been other moments like that in the course of your ministry where you had this moment where God's presence was so real? In the presence of my ministry, moments where God's presence was real. There have been times in preaching when, uh, okay, always in preaching, because I leave the sermons just as a rough outline so that I can just do it at the moment. But there have been times in preaching that there's a moment where suddenly an image, a vision just takes over. I, I'm thinking back in particular to when the Challenger blew up. And that needed to be part of the sermon. I didn't know what part, but during that moment where I was going to talk about it, I had just kind of a momentary imagery or vision, whatever you want to call it, of how in that moment the Lord gathered all those people to the Lord's self. And there are moments in preaching like that where I'm standing in the pulpit, but I'm as amazed as anybody could possibly be at the words that are formed. We're in a time of transition culturally as a church and people wonder what is the future of the church and so I wonder Norma what gives you hope for the future of the church? What gives me hope for the future of the church is that it is the body of Christ. It is, in part, the presence of the risen Lord in this world. And nothing is going to end that. It may be transformed, and I think I can't envision the form it's going to take, but the church will not cease because it is in part the very risen Christ.